everybody. It's great to see all of you this morning. We had a wonderful time in the Penasco Valley with the Penasco Church of Christ this past week doing our mission VBS. 20 of us went. So we had a wonderful time, though. I, I saw all of the connections that our kids and adults made with the children and the adults uh, that went to our mission VBS years and they hadn't gotten to have it for five years and they were so appreciative and so thankful privilege to be able to be it's it's crazy how really transform uh your your bond with someone you didn't know before that and to see god at work so we were really as each each of us raised our own money to be able to go and go valley and to the church there thank you for lending us to them to be able to do god's eternal work of teaching the gospel and teaching the word to young people so far away but young people who desperately need jesus Glad to be able to fellowship with you once again. If is an incredibly useful word. It applies a condition that needs to be met in order for an action to take place. If it rains, we'll have to move everything inside. Have you ever done that before? If you get hungry... That's the thing we do, right? My, my grandmother told my mom growing up, it's root hog or die. I didn't exactly know what that meant, but basically it meant you're on your own, kid. Get your own food. And when we heard that, we just knew if it happens, if this happens, this is what you do. And so that, that word if is important. We, we say things to people like, give me a call. That's an important if, isn't it? If anything ever happens, just know that I'm here for you. Those are important ifs. They're conditions that if met, uh, they require action on our part. And the Bible is full of ifs. Specifically, in Philippians chapter 2, out several ifs. And Paul is trying the importance of the unity that comes from being God's people, the mindset of God's people. And it's challenging. It's incredibly challenging, these, these conditions that he places on the church in Philippi to do the Lord's work. He says in verse consolation in Christ if if any fellowship of the spirit and mercy fulfill my joy by being like minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind ambition or conceit but in loveliness of mind let each esteem Look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. There's a lot of if. If these things exist in your life, then this is what you need to do. As we continue. In here that I want. Specifically. If there is. That's a powerful in the spirit of God. When we think of the words fellowship, what we're really talking about is not just eating a meal or it means to have a bond, a strong connection with something or someone that is so you can't pull it God. That doesn't just mean 
It means that there's a strong connection with God that nobody can pull apart, that we can only would we do that? And so he says, if there is fellowship in the Spirit, and for us as Christ in us through the, our immersion, our baptism into If spirit, absolutely we do. Do we respond to that fellowship the way that God intended for us to respond? That's the question that's important for this if, for this spirit among us. The if here centers on the Spirit, and that means that we need to be able to bring this if into reality if we want to follow God. So we begin companion to God's Spirit dwelling within us. If we want to encourage, is that when you're given You do it. Even if it takes you, you encourage people when you have a chance. The world is harsh. Sin is hard. Every bit of encouragement that I desperately. Do you feel the same? In my lifetime, encouraging to one another or struggles because we're too busy lifting in love. That's my wish for all the Lord's body to be. Part of the reason that churches falter is because we don't lift one another up. Because the Spirit of God definitely encourages us. We don't even know. Spirit dwelling in us, God's love keeping us going. When we were in the Sibapu Resort where we stayed, you immediately know the air here is not the same as the air Oxygen, the oxygen level is the same, but the pressure because of the elevation makes even far less. You get out of breath really easy. When I'm singing with the kids and up and lifting our legs or whatever it is we do, you get tired really fast, right? To do exercise. In fact, Olympic athletes these higher altitudes, and then they'll come back to see literally more oxygenation so that you can breathe better. It, it just a normal elevation. We are in a difficult encouragement comes to help the Spirit gives us life. The Spirit is what keeps us from losing our faith. And that's why part of the big, one of the big reasons for having the church somewhere is encouraged. We desperately need to be encouraged. Sometimes we don't understand how important it is that the gathering of ourselves together is in the manner of some, but even more so as we see the day approaching, because we need encouragement. We might think we're strong. We might think that we have never abandoned my God, but let me tell you, I need the Spirit is crying out for me to encourage all of you and for you to encourage me. That's what draws us 
he says in our passage of Scripture in verse 1, word means encouragement in Christ. Is there encouragement in Christ? Absolutely. Who always encourage. That doesn't mean we ignore problems. It does mean that my, the purpose of me being with you is to encourage you. To support you in any way I can. To give you what you need to get through the day. Sometimes that's all we can do is get through the day, right? But we need to encourage and support one another if there is any consolation in Christ. If Christ encourages us, we ought to also encourage each other. It is a spirit that inspires the kind of love and encouragement found in Christ who shows by example what encouragement looks like every moment we walk in the spirit. Because the spirit is our example as he encourages us by supporting us and strengthening us. This peace that, that we can't get unless Jesus is present in our lives, unless the Spirit is present in our lives, that that peace comes from the Spirit of God. That, that hope that we have of eternal life, that comes from the Spirit of God working in us. The power that continually supplies us, the faith we need to, to get over the struggles we have, to, to thrive in a world full of darkness, to, to bring the light to others. So we learn from the Spirit how to encourage others because we ourselves are continuously encouraged. We're told in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, very specifically how the Spirit encourages us. And it says this, the fruit of the Spirit, can you say it with me? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The kids even have a song about it. Who gives us these things? Who gives us love? Who gives us peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control? Who gives us these things? The Spirit. The Spirit encourages us by producing in us these things that are desperately needed to be children of God. So what do we do then for one another? Well, Paul is saying that you need to encourage one another as a Spirit. If there is any consolation in Christ, if any fellowship of the Spirit, then you need, you need to encourage each other in the same way. You need to share this love, this joy, this peace this patience, this kindness, this goodness. All of these things have to do in part with how we treat each other too, doesn't it? It's not just the things we receive, it's the things that we give. Can we give someone our long-suffering? Be patient with them? Can we be at peace with people? Can we show them kindness? Can we show them goodness? These things are supposed to be the, 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 the demonstration that the Spirit is in us. So we ought to be people who encourage and support each other with these things in our lives. And so our encouragement is not only inspired by the Spirit and shown to us by the Spirit's encouragement towards us, but we become partners in the Spirit of sharing His fruit with each other. This morning, I got an unexpected uh, audio call from, I call it an audio call because it was on Facebook. It wasn't actually a phone call, but I got it from a, a friend of mine who I knew in high school, and he calls me every so often with a crisis of faith. He, he, he has gone through horrible things in his life, awful things, and, and our past, I first knew him as, as someone who bullied me in high school, but... I reached out to him a few years ago, and I told him, I want you to know, I forgive you, and I want to be your friend. And we became friends. It was wonderful, you know. But he, he still struggles a lot in his life, and he calls me once in a while, and we talk. And he told me a story about he was at some kind of, of event, and he saw this basket of little wooden crosses, and it says, you're free to take one. He said, I got selfish. I took three of them. I took one for my girlfriend, one for her mom, and one for me. And I've been holding this cross like a worry stone. And I just rub this cross, and it always makes me feel better. And, and I just, I, I don't want to let go of it. He, he was really struggling. He says, you know, does, does God exist? Uh, he was really wanting faith. He, he was wanting to take that plunge. And we talked all morning, and I'm thinking, 
well, I need to get to church pretty soon. But I'm, I'm thinking, I need to be here for him in this moment. I don't know when he's going to call me again. And, and so I thought about that little wooden cross, and I said, you need to hold on to it. And he said, it was free. And I said, the cross is free. Grace is free. And, and I want you to hold on to this cross, and, and I want you to hand out as many crosses as you can. By that, I mean, you, you need to encourage other people and tell them your story and tell them about your life so that they can have hope too. And I think sometimes we've been given such an amazing, beautiful, wonderful gift in Jesus Christ. We have a cross that, that can inspire people. We carry a cross that can encourage people. We have a story that can help people get through the hardest things that they're going through. And we don't know when we're going to use it. But for me, I'd take all the crosses and I'd spread them out to everybody I can because I want people to know just how amazing Jesus is and that they, he, he can give you hope and he, he can give you peace and he can give you joy and he can give you grace and he can bless you and he can love you because at the end of the world God wants every single person to know the same hope that we have and I am so blessed to be able to share my cross with you to hold it dearly and close to my heart, to keep it in my hand, and to tell people about how amazing Jesus is. And it starts in this group of people. Every chance we get, we encourage because we have the same spirit encouraging us, and we want to be people who encourage through the Spirit of God. As we seek to encourage as being one in the Spirit, our hearts are convicted to not only encourage each other, but to walk in lowliness of mind. We are called to be one in the Spirit as we submit to one another. Submission is not always an act of obedience, but more often it is an act of putting others and their needs just above our own. That's what he's saying to do in this passage in Philippians chapter 2. He says... If there's any a consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, he says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And how do you do that? How do you accomplish that? What well, he tells us, let nothing, verse 3, be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. What he's saying, it, it's the very definition of submission. Submission is a military term to say to put yourself right below someone else in importance. That's what he's saying for us to do. When we submit to one another, we're saying that my needs are not at the top. It doesn't mean that my needs are unimportant. We put it just below others, right? To say that, that what we need is still important. But we want to say, you're important to me. Your needs are important to me. Your faith is important to me. Your, your well-being is important to me. Your family is important to me. And most of all, your salvation is important to me. That's what submission does. It says, you're important. And I, I'm going to lower myself and my own needs because I want to help you. That should be the call for every Christian throughout the world, is to submit to one another in the love of God through the Spirit of Jesus. And again, we have an example, of course. We have the example of Christ who's emptied himself of all glory to take on the form of man and to go through what we went through. He said that you are more important than me being in heaven. He, he literally came to earth and, and removed all the trappings of heaven to live life with us so that he might lift us up and save us. That's what submission does. People don't like submission. They're, they're proud. They're boastful. I, I don't want to submit to anybody. Let me tell you something, that Jesus submitted himself to the worst punishment in the world for my sake. 
If I'm not willing to submit myself to others in the, in the Lord's body or around me, then, then, then I don't have any business calling myself a follower of Jesus. My ego needs to be put, held back. That doesn't mean my needs are, are un, non-existent, but it means that sometimes the needs of others are far more important than my own. And we need to see that and recognize that in the way that we live our lives. And so, to be like-minded, it's, it's a hard thing to say. I, I doubt that if I got all of you together and asked, what do you think about the, the, our nation right now and the direction of our nation? I doubt we would all have the same thing to say, right? What do you think we could do to fix things in our country? Do you think we'd all have the same answer? You think we get mad at other people's answers? Well, I don't know about that. I, I don't like that. See, that's why I don't po talk about politics because I, it just everybody gets upset. So I'm like, yeah, we'll just talk about Jesus, you know. But we never have the same answer about just about anything. What's your favorite food? Well, I love steak. I hate steak. I love chicken. I hate chicken. I love pork. I hate pork. We can't agree about anything most of the time. We can't even agree about where we go to eat after church on Sunday, right? But I'll tell you this, we need to be like-minded when it comes to our humility. We cannot raise ourselves up above others, not if we want to follow Christ. Sometimes all I'm looking at is my comfort. Well, I didn't like that new song we sang. I didn't know it. I don't like it when we do that. I don't like how cold it is in the auditorium sometimes i hate how hot it is in the auditorium sometimes i don't i don't like the way this guy teaches i don't like some of the things he's you see sometimes we are so focused on our own small little circle and we forget that the purpose of coming here is to be like jesus and to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of god and we're told that if you humble yourself before god if you submit to one another in love According to James, he will exalt you. Let him be the one that lifts you up. Don't lift yourself up. And I'll tell you this, sometimes I complain, I catch myself doing it. Sometimes I think, if people were more like me, then the church would be a better place. If people would just listen to what I have to say. But then I have to stop myself and I'm thinking, wait a second, my job here is not for, to, to make things like I want. My job is to become like Jesus. My, my task in life, my course in life is to become the image of Christ. And Jesus, first and foremost, gave everything up to come to this world. Until you do that, don't complain about something you don't like. Go serve someone in a way that humbles you and lifts them up because that's what Jesus did for you. That's what the Spirit calls us to do. Ask yourself, are my motivations from the Spirit or the flesh? And do I just want something because I'm mad about it? You know, I, and I'm the same way. I get upset sometimes. Maybe somebody says something I don't like. Maybe they don't have the attitude I like. Maybe everything isn't the way that I want it all the time. And here's the thing. He says, don't think only about your own interests, but the interests of whom? Of others. He says, make someone else more important than you. And that's hard in our society where I'm number one. It's about what I want. You're not more important than me. But Jesus, he said, you're important because I'm dying for you. You're important because I'm giving up everything for you. You're important, so I'm going to do everything I can to get you to heaven. Folks, you're more important than me because you're my brother and sister in Christ, and I want to get you to heaven. And I hope you want the same for me. That's what humility is. That's what submission is. It says, I'm not the most important thing in this world. Jesus is. Because he made me more important than him staying in heaven. He came and he suffered. And he gave up everything so that I could find eternal life. That's what the Spirit urges us to do. That's what fellowship in the Spirit looks like and feels like. As we submit to one another, we see that the value we place on others does not have to do with what they can give us, but the worth of their hearts and lives in the eyes of God. Starting in verse 10, says, 
for Israel. It says he found him, speaking of Israel, in a deserted land and in the wasteland instructed, instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He Israel. He, he, he directed them. He kept them as and griped and whined and get someone to take us back to Egypt. This is the same for too long in their estimation. They built a golden calf with the help of Aaron. Oh, I don't know. It just threw some to, to sell that to Moses. This is the same Israel that time and time again chose the apple of his he encircled them he said you're important Jesus did the same for one another see that's how you people the way that God sees them because you are important to God God gave everything up for you that doesn't mean is treasure because you're smarter he loves you he created you and he wants you we ought to do that for one another be the apple of each other's eye to prefer one another as Christ and that brings us forward to what he tells Our task is in others in our own hearts. So when we can encourage and love, we draw closer to the Spirit of God working in all of us. The final if in this Spirit in a way that fills us with God's power and love. Care for one another. For, oh, yeah, I've got to care about you. This is an important word. At the end of our passage of Scripture, he says, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, what does it mean to comfort one another with love? What does it mean to have affection and mercy? Words that you just toss around or write in a in a words that change the way that we about our priorities I could always list to you all of me for my flaws and faults I would hope that you have comfort and to encourage me The spirit is full of love. This church and for all of us. Spirit, he, he loves us more than we could ever capture in words. And because of that, we need to turn for what important that really show that we say. Spirit, how do you achieve act of no reputation of a body? The point of he said, hey, because he cared for and let me. see someone to the struggle 
go on Wednesday. Spirit urges us to have to drop everything sometimes and do a side for that. Must we on so? Spirit convicts, receive, form, this does. We need to do not just their pocket, feel better. what there do we books in the of God transform and souls we become Coming one of about things this summer, day life, and to really focus in loving Jesus. You down, you put away your schedule, serving Christians together, learn. When we come together, when we see each other and we grow so the mess if there is any comfort of love, mercy, let's have the same mind when it comes to the fellowship that we share in God's spirit. The way that God has cared for each and every one of us. Let us show the same concern for our brothers and sisters in Christ and for the lost all around us as God has shown to us our entire lives. When we do so, we will share in one spirit. There is one spirit of God. That spirit always says the same thing. He doesn't disagree with God's word. He, he doesn't uh, neglect people. He doesn't push people aside. He, he doesn't get angry and bitter and hateful. He, he doesn't reject people simply because we don't like something about them. The Spirit of God always acts in God's best interest, in God's will, in God's love. We need to get on the same boat and on the same page with the Spirit of God, and we need to do that together. I hope you will all share with me the love of Jesus Christ, the passion that he has for you, Let's be a church that dwells in God's spirit in all that we do. If you need to be baptized into Christ, the opportunity to receive God's spirit is right in front of you. To have God dwell in you, to have your sins washed away, to have the promise of eternity in your heart and soul. It'll change your life forever. And for, for any of you here who have gotten away from the spirit of God, who, who have quenched the spirit with, with fear or doubt or, or anger or bitterness, who, who have not shown the love that you need to show for your brother and sister, who, whose heart has just become hard 
or you're just hurting inside. Today is the day to change. Today is the day to let the Spirit of God convict you and change you. Whatever need you have, please come forward now as together we stand and sing.